welcome dear friends welcome to your new video today i am here with a special purpose that is to introduce in spirits test series which we have announced in today's hindu to give you more information about the test series which in spirit is introducing before you so here we are trying to give an overview about how to prepare for prelims in a sensible and meaningful manner because prelims preparations usually are random and the idea of people about how to prepare for prelims is usually vague and here we are trying to give you a clear picture of how to prepare for your prelims through in spirit test series introduction for any aspirant his civil service preparations begins with understanding of civil service syllabus as far as civil service examination is concerned there is two distinct part that is the prelims and mains so we have a very specific syllabus which is available for prelims as well as for mains prelims has two papers that is general studies and csat here if you are closely analyzing the syllabus of your general studies or paper 1 of preliminary examination you will come across certain specific syllabus that is history geography economics then science and technology polity ecology and environment and current affairs so all these areas is supposed to be mentioned or you have to go through all these areas during the span of your preparations for an average aspirant civil service preparation begins with understanding syllabus syllabus in civil service examination means the syllabus of prelims as well as the syllabus of mains prelims examination is organized into two parts that is paper 1 which is general studies and paper 2 which is csat so the most important aspect post 2013 is general studies paper the other one being a qualifier recently it has been converted into a qualifier where you are supposed to score a mark which is 67 and more than that mark is not valid for your prelims qualification so general studies paper is now the key for your success in prelims examination here if you are analyzing the syllabus of preliminary paper 1 you will come across certain subjects that is first one is history geography economics polity that means in schools you might have learned it as civics here it is indian polity where you have to learn about the constitution of the country and then there will be science and technology ecology and environment and something which is vaguely defined as current affairs so these are the topics which you are coming across when you are referring to the syllabus of preliminary paper 1 but if you are using an extra tool that is if you are analyzing 5 years question papers prepared by upsc for conducting preliminary examination then you will get a different insight into these subjects first thing or first and foremost thing you will be understanding is these subjects are not simply something which you have learned in your schools or the scope of or dimension into which you have to look into is something which is different from calling it as geography simply rather you can have three distinct part when it comes to geography that is agriculture of india geophysical phenomena associated with india and rest of the world and the third part is environmental geography human geography and economic geography will also follow this and after this if you are considering history history usually when when somebody says history it is ancient medieval and modern india and in the prelims point of view world history is not important so that can be omitted but here the scope of history is not limited to these three topics rather art and culture of india which includes music dance 
literature, architecture and all other cultural and artistic aspect of the country has to be mentioned very specifically. So you have to deal, while you are dealing with the syllabus of history for prelims, you have to deal with this culture part in a very important manner. And third one, you can go to science and technology. Science and technology includes everyday science. That means something which is asking what is the principle behind, behind rainbow where you have to say it is reflection, refraction and total internal reflection. This comes from your primary school textbooks of NCRT and there will be something which is asking you about what is happening in or what is the aftermath of something which is going on in Large Hadron Collider which is current science and technology. So this current aspect as well as something which is there in everyday science both of these things are included in your scope of science and technology. Another most important aspect you need to address is polity and economics. Both these subjects has to be addressed based on the, their dynamicity that means both these things are dynamic Every day there is changes happening in it with every Supreme Court verdict comes some change in polity and with every budget and economic survey comes some structural or systemic differences in your economics. That means you have to relate these subjects with what is going on currently in your country. And next thing is the most important aspect of civil service preparation ask this is directly and indirectly related to all the other subjects we have so far mentioned that is current affairs because if you are objectively analyzing the questions of UPSC you can trace some relevance for that particular issue mentioned in that question to the current affairs which was going on through the preparation span of yours here you must understand that here comes the most important raw material for any aspirant of India who is preparing for civil services that is the Hindu newspaper. And please don't misunderstand me for recommending a specific newspaper that is the Hindu. I am not a brand ambassador of Hindu but unfortunately UPSC sometimes seems to be a brand ambassador of Hindu because UPSC always prefers articles which is coming in Hindu while setting their questions or national and international issues which is having some relevance related to Indian society, economy or India's constitution. All these things are referred and it has been exhaustively covered in Hindu. And Hindu still, for, for a wonder, in, in a heavily corporatized newspaper industry, Hindu still manages a rural affairs editor, where actually India's heart is lying. And for a civil service aspirant, rural India and rural affairs of India, including rural agriculture, right from sowing to harvesting, everything is relevant. So in all these aspects, you can see what is the importance of Hindu. So Hindu newspaper is very important and highly critical for your civil service preparation and I can substantiate this portion or this idea which is proposed by me through a lot of examples which has been happened which has so far happened in civil service examinations. Hope all of you know what is the meaning of word myth. Myth is something which is widely held but a false belief and civil services examination is one of the most important area where you can see a lot of myths or misconceptions which is being widely held by people who are preparing for civil services examination. One of the most important among them is about the unpredictability of UPSC examination and its questions. That is, it is mother of all competitive exams. Nobody can predict any questions from civil service preliminary examination. This is a widely held myth. But I will randomly choose some questions and I will say that, I will prove before you that this is simply a myth. It is false. We can take an example about a cattle feed which was actually cultivated by Indian farmers during the crop rotation to increase the nitrogenous fertilizers or the 
nitrogen content of the soil to make the soil nitrogen rich we usually cultivate leguminous plant and there is a leguminous plant which is widely cultivated in north india which is usually used as a cattle feed also that is gore gore seed sometimes called as cluster bean and this gore seed find a mention in the question paper of 2014 so for a person who believes that in the unpredictability of UPSC, usually say that UPSC has randomly picked this particular cow, this cattle feed from a list of hundreds of crops in India and made a question about this. But this is not correct. If you are doing a reverse engineering process, that means if you are bringing starting from what is a gore seed. And then if you are tracing back to the current issues which is going on about this particular crop, you can identify that this crop has found a mention in civil service preliminary examination for obvious reasons. I will suggest some of these reasons. First thing, there was a news in Hindu newspaper regarding ban of gore seed in 2014 February. 2014 February, there was a news in Hindu newspaper saying about the ban on future trading, to be very specific. Future trading of gore seed was banned by Securities and Exchange Board of India. And what went wrong with gore seed? That was the next issue. If you are going back a little bit to 2013 newspapers, you can see that there was a huge increase, a huge hike in the newspaper, this particular product. That means the price of this gore seed. And again, you are going two months back in 2013. You can understand that there was a finding from US which said that this gore seed or gore gum, which is a product which is made from finely powdered gore seeds, that can be used in shale gas extraction process and shale gas extraction was going on in full vigor, full swing in America and this product was widely purchased by them for making this industrial additive for the extraction of go this particular shale gas. So it was because of that reason this particular leguminous plant came into national attention. And it was because this particular leguminous plant or its seed has hit Hindus headline many times within the span of 2013-14, UPSC has included that particular crop into the exam questions. This was not a random pick. Anybody who is following Hindu newspaper, who is following the news and what is happening in the agricultural sector of the country can simply say that this will be there in civil service preliminary examination. That means there is predictability. Another important myth that is everything and anything will be asked in a very deeper sense of analysis in preliminary question papers. I'll try to explain this myth using an example of Agni 4. This question is coming from Contemporary Defense Technology, which is a part of Science and Technology Syllabus of Civil Service Examination. And here, for a person, you, you please understand this thing. If you are having any basic idea about civil service examinations of the country, then you will never fall for this myth. Because civil service examination is open equally for a person who has done his graduation in any of the languages, regional language literature of the country and at the same time a person from an IIT who is a postgraduate in any engineering stream is also given this exam, also giving this exam on the similar footing. So if UPSC is preparing a question where your scientific excellence is being tested, then that question will not contain a person who has done his degree in literature. So there is a clear case of violation of equality, which is a fundamental constitutional principle in a democratic nation like India. So please understand, UPSC is more sensible than many of our people who are setting question papers. So they will not include any of these scientific aspects into their question. 
For Agdi 4, UPSC has given three statements and asked you to identify which one is correct. First statement by UPSC was, Agni 4 is a surface to surface missile. Second one was, it was propelled using liquid propellant. Third one was, it is a missile with 7500 kilometers range. Here, somebody may think that a deeper analysis of all missiles which is actually produced by India is required to give an answer for this. Now, I will try to eliminate the wrong statements among this. First one, go to the first statement. A person with bare minimum idea about India's missile technology knows that Agni series belong to surface to surface missile group. So you can with your bare common sense, with your reading of newspaper, you can say that that statement is correct. Second statement is about the propulsion technology. You need not know about everything about propulsion technology, the fuels which is used or whatever is being associated scientifically to this. Rather, you must be a person of common sense having basic information that India is still struggling with solid propulsion technology and this is the area where India's missile technology is heavily criticized by the peer group technocrats. So with that basic information you can eliminate the second statement. Third statement is another thing which says that it is having a range of 7500 kilometers. And please understand none of the missiles till date which is manufactured by India has achieved a range more than 7000 kilometers or even 5000 to 6000 kilometers is the maximum range which has achieved by India's missile technology. So anybody with a common sense and common understanding of the subject can eliminate this statement. So here, by using the technique of elimination, any person with common sense can answer this. And understand, the question is again coming from current affairs. Again, this one is covered in Hindu newspaper, along with that India yearbook by the Publications Department of Government of India contains about this particular thing. So by reading these two contemporary sources, you will get an answer for Agni 4 or this question from science and technology. When somebody say everything in civil service syllabus or the every questions asked in civil service prelims has some relevance related to contemporary issues or current affairs. Anybody can bet by saying how history can be connected to this, how history is supposed to have some sort of contemporary relevance because history itself is something which has happened in the past. So now I will take a question from history and try to decipher how it is related to contemporary issues. A question asked in 2014 prelims about Gadda party. Gadda party was a Sikh revolutionary outfit which was originated in San Francisco post Komagata Maru incident happened in India. Komagata Maru incident was actually some people who are actually trying to migrate to Canada from India without actual travel documents. They were trying to land in Vancouver but the Canadian government, the then Canadian government was not ready to grant them permission to land in Vancouver even as a refugee. So they were sent back to India and when they came back to India there was an attack into this ship by the Britishers and there was a lot of matters in this Komagata Maru incident. Recently also this issue was prominently mentioned in newspapers because the Canadian Prime Minister when he visited India has owed his regret or he has asked sorry to Indian society for not granting Indians a refugee status in the, that country or not permitting them to land in Vancouver and he has taken the moral responsibility of the tragedy happened in Kamagada Maru. And coming back to Gadar party, a question about Gadar party was there in 2014 prelims. You may know that there is a lot of organizations in Indian freedom movement and there is a lot of mo movements 
done by Indians and foreigners towards the movement of towards independence of the country. So how this something which has formed in San Francisco came into prominence and came into civil service question paper. The question can be answered by simply referring to newspaper of August 12, 2013. That is Hindu newspaper of 2013 August had an article about the 100th anniversary of Gaddar party. So Gaddar party was a question in civil service preliminary when it was celebrating its 100th anniversary. So any organization which is celebrating its 100th anniversary is actually relevant. It has something which is related to the current affairs or there will be some memorial lectures happening somewhere. There will be some memorial programs happening somewhere. Leaders will be commemorated. Their memories will be restored again because they have played a part in Indian history. So this current relevance along with the historical aspect has given them a space in civil service examination. So anybody who is preparing for civil service can prepare everything that happened 50 years ago, 100 years ago while they are preparing for their civil service preliminary because there is every chance that you may get a question from that incident. So here again there is predictability for conventional subject like history. So civil service questions are not random picks. We were analyzing different questions appeared in civil service preliminary examination and we were doing some sort of reverse engineering where we are tracing out the news article from where these questions were made. Now I will talk about a news article which came in March 2013 again in May 2013 in Times of India regarding the death of Pashmina goats in large numbers in Ladakh Valley of Kashmir. So there was news in Times of India about the death of hundreds of Pashmina goats which was grown by a community called Changpas. Changpa is actually a tribal a nomadic tribal community of India seen in Ladakh. And this community are growing this Pashmina goats. So how a civil service aspirant can identify this news article which is actually about the death of some goat. This is simply a news. You can simply omit this news while you are if you are not a civil service aspirant practically. But when you are a civil service aspirant, you must go through the important aspect of that particular news. Here there are two important aspects to be noted by a civil service aspirant. First thing, it has a direct correlation with a tribal group of the country. Most important thing because all the tribal communities, their cultural aspects, unique products by the tribal communities, their geographical distribution in different parts of India. All these forms very relevant part of civil service syllabus. So as the interest of such a community is involved in this news, a civil service aspirant must be conscious about this news. And second thing, the Pashmina gods have another commercial or economic importance because a geographical indication status gained product from Kashmir that is Pashmina fabric that is being made of the wool of this particular breed of goat or the Pashmina fabric is getting their name from this particular goat variety. So in two aspects, that means all the geographical indication product of the country is relevant for civil service. Again, all the tribal groups who are situated in different part of the country is important for civil service. So this twin importance has given this particular thing a role in civil service preliminary examination. There was a question in 2014 prelims about Changpa community and the first statement said they were located in Uttarakhand and here all the other statements given about this community was correct and this first statement can be eliminated by any person who has read this news because it has specifically mentioned that they are living in Ladakh which is in Kashmir. 
So anybody who has gone through this newspaper and objectively analyzed this newspaper news article in a civil service aspirant's perspective might have given the correct answer for that question. So this question also was not an accident. Diseases and their pathogens. UPSC is always obsessed about diseases and their pathogens. Any person who is objectively analyzing five year question papers of UPSC can identify this fact. Because all the diseases, if, especially if they are contagious diseases, they are a threat to humanity. And if that kind of a threat is causing or happening in our country, then UPSC will be extra conscious about that particular thing. So the newspaper of 5th February 2015, 5th February 2015, Hindu newspaper has an elaborate article on a new disease introduced in India, which was swine flu, which was caused by H1N1 virus. And there was an article, highly empathetic article about H1N1 and its causative organism and its modus of infection. Everything was detailedly mentioned in this particular article. So there was a question in UPSC 2015 prelims which asked H1N1 is associated with, with which of the given diseases and it was given AIDS, swine flu and other things are given option. But for a person who has read this article, this question is a cakewalk. So if you have the basic idea that all the diseases and their pathogens are an area of interest for UPSC and if you are objectively analyzing this news article which happened even two to three months before your prelims examination then you can identify this question and you can tackle this question in a very good manner without error. So you just imagine from these two years if you have taken 2014 and 15 you can find a lot of questions or majority of questions which has appeared in this examination was simply based on current affairs and this current affairs has been in a very good systematic manner related to conventional subjects which is mentioned in UPSC syllabus. So the syllabus is systematically connected to current affairs. This is the method of question preparation by UPSC. That means if you are a sensible person with common sense, you can predict what, it, what will be there in next civil service examination. So if a person was made a pool of 2000 questions and if he is having bare minimum information about what a civil service examination is and if has ever gone through five year question papers of UPSC, then he can predict minimum 20 questions from that. So I have seen advertisements saying that we have predicted 15 questions from prelims 2015, 14, 16. So anybody can say this because if you are associated with civil service examination, if you are a trainer, if you are a pool, if you belong to a pool of faculty, then you can predict these questions because there is nothing, it is not something like vanishing the beauty or vanishing Taj Mahal. It is not a magic. It is not black magic. It is not horoscope. It is not prediction. It is simply common sense. So any person with common sense can predict minimum 30 to 40 questions in civil service examination every year. So here we are trying to do it in an error free and objective manner where we can assure you more question than anywhere you can find in any customized material for civil services and I must I'm interested to say something else as a part of awareness you please don't stick on to materials which are custom made for civil service I have seen advertisements of materials which says that we are providing you materials which is completely exclusive and exhaustive that means you can get all the civil service preliminary questions from GS from our material. There are a lot of claims of this sort. Please understand, please don't underestimate Union Public Service Commission which is a constitutional body. At the very moment somebody makes a claim that all the questions of UPSC civil services will be coming from our custom made, tailor made material. 
UPSC will be very conscious in preparing questions because if 20 questions or 30 questions are made from something which is already open in public domain the very credibility of UPSC will be challenged so if somebody is making that kind of predictions be very conscious because UPSC will be more cautious while preparing questions they will try to eliminate all the possible questions coming out of that custom made material so please follow your newspaper please follow your NCRT textbooks follow your textbooks which is standard and then you try to relate this concept with something which you are reading in newspaper anybody can be sensible and please apply your common sense make educated guesses then civil service preliminary examination will be a cakewalk for you I'll take give you an example from the immediate last year that is there was a question about goods and services tax GST any person with basic common sense can predict that there will be a question based on GST because it was a Russian change it has brought in a revolutionary sea changes into India's taxation systems and because of that reason no government can have an examination which is based on focused on current affairs economics constitution of the country can avoid this kind of a question and you please understand you are not supposed to be a chartered accountant to give an answer to the question asked by Union Public Service Commission regarding GST they simply ask that what are the changes supposed to be happening in India it was about that and first change they mentioned was that will make India a unified market second thing was a statement about India's proposed growth because of GST third question was third statement was about India overtaking China within a span of 10 years or 20 years please understand you can't predict anything which has mentioned in the second and third statement based on a tax reform which is happening in your country so both the statements after that was hypothetical so for any person with bare minimum common sense can eliminate the second and third statement and stick on the first one which has objectively said what is happening with GST so everywhere from every subject you can identify things which you can predict that there will be asked in the civil service preliminary examination so please don't wonder about these kind of claims which is made by people or please don't wonder about any of these things even you can predict what will be there in civil service examination if you are not in a position to do that our test series is aimed at making you possible to predict what civil service examination will ask so we will introduce before you a learning methodology where anybody of you can predict what is civil service questions and we will introduce something some questions before you which will be the expected questions and we are nobody to say that all these questions will be appearing in civil service prelims next year but we will be sensible enough to ensure that all the relevant topics affecting all the things which is mentioned in the syllabus will be covered in the 45 test organized in in spirit so here you can believe us you can take us into confidence and you can systematically prepare based on the syllabus and schedule which is given to you by in spirit and you can follow them and you can ensure your birth in civil service mains this part of the video is actually focused on explaining the scheme of our test series or how it is unique here most important thing most number of questions means most accurate that means practicing of maximum number of questions before the preliminary examination can make any candidate of civil service examination accurate and you can make educated guesses about the questions which even you don't know because you will be familiar to the premises from where these questions are manufactured so first of all we are coming before you with maximum number of tests that means 35 
tests are exclusively made for civil service general studies itself. Again, 10 tests for ensuring your competence in CSAT, that is the paper 2, civil service aptitude test is also included. Considering last year's result of Kerala, where there are a lot of candidates who has simply failed to clear civil service prelims because they were not able to attain the cutoff marks in civil service aptitude test, that is the second paper. So here we have included 10 tests exclusively for CSIR and 35 tests exclusively for general studies to ensure that you are practicing 33,500 to 4,500 questions based on civil service preliminary scheme. And again, our test series includes exclusive sessions. All the tests from day one, the mock self-assessment test to the end of the day, last test, comprehensive test will be followed by detailed discussion, something which is way beyond reading of answer keys. Because people who are conducting the discussion will be competent enough to give answers to all your doubts regarding that particular questions. So we will not be reading out answer keys for you. Rather, we will be explaining the reasons and premises based on which we have created the question. So that will add value to your preparation. That is what we are guaranteeing in our test series, first of all. Then, there are tailor-made tests. For example, budget and economic survey. The test of budget and economic survey will be followed by our reading, understanding and preparation of ex exclusive material for dealing with the questions coming from budget and economic survey and we will give you a three day session on budget and economic survey and after that there will be a test which is exclusively with questions which is about concept and all the other new initiatives which is going to revolutionize India's economy. So this particular thing will be there in our test series. Again, another important raw material, one of the single largest source of question is India yearbook. There are two specific tests dealing with the questions that may arise out of India yearbook. And all the NCRT textbooks has been used as a source for preparation of question because that again is another large source from where you can get direct questions in civil service preliminary examination. And finally, there will be six comprehensive tests exactly done in the manner and way in which civil service preliminary examinations are conducted in actual sense, which will give you the feel of writing civil service preliminary examination, which includes a morning session on general studies and an afternoon session on CSAT. So with this six test at the end, civil service preliminary examination will just be the seventh test of our test series. That means you will be getting a distinct psychological advantage above the competitors, sometimes more than 10 to 15 lakhs people who are writing civil service examination. Among them, we will culture you in such a manner that you will be familiar with such a culture that you can attend this examination without fear, without any apprehensions. You can go, you can win the civil service preliminary examination. You can ensure a safe birth in the mains examination where you will get it again the training of in spirit. Thank you for listening to us. Please, we are looking forward for you to join civil service test series by in spirit and that is available in online format and offline format. You can contact us in 9745-647400 and you can visit our Facebook page, our website or even our YouTube channel for more information. Thank you.